Welcome everybody to Central Oregon Fly Tires Guild meeting. And Jerry Chris will be our presenter today. And he's going to be talking all about chrononymids. And we are, I, I'm going to fish those this year. And I'm pretty excited about learning uh, the patterns and how to fish it. Take it away, Jer. Hi, I'm Jerry Chris. I live in uh, Lapine, Oregon. And uh, I'm lucky we've got uh, enough lakes around here to where um, we're going to uh, talk about some chronomids and midges, uh, kind of uh, the ones that uh, that I believe work. They I find work well up here. Uh, the colors they can be. Uh, it, it's quite a diverse bug. Um, they uh, they live basically in the in the in the soft uh, mud straits of the of the lakes and rivers. Um, the more I uh, more I study this, I find that uh, they fish these same bugs that, that you see in the magazines, acronymids and midges, whatever you want to call them, zebra midge and stuff like that. Um, they fish them in the rivers too. And um, part of what um, what I've learned from uh, from the UK, from the because they really really fish them a lot in the reservoirs there, is is how to fish them without an indicator. And one of the reasons they they don't they don't they don't it's not like they 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 knock people who fish with the, with the indicator, but there's a a point where, like any 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 drift that you're the presentation that you're making, the least the least amount of things you have in the way of your in touch with the fly, and the indicator is a block to the fly. As far as it, when you read about what they believe is happening is. As the fish takes that, it can feel the weight of the indicator. And so that, that's when they'll let go. Uh, last year I last year and the year before, I really worked hard on, on how to fish them. And we'll talk about that. But uh, one of the things we're, I, I found, I'll talk about some materials that I found um, that, uh, that seemed to help um, in my cleanup of this mess back behind me, which is still in the process. I found some line cards. Did anybody ever meet Ray, uh, Ray Ratto, rather uh, Ray Bradley? Anybody remember him from Pine uh, out here in California? Well, Ray passed away a couple of years ago and uh, he was selling some stuff uh, that we used for a flashback. And it was, a, it was a ribbon type material that um, would just, just glow when you put anything on it. And it was kind of, let me turn the other camera on here. I'll show this, let's see. Okay, it was a material like this. Now his was a pearl color and it was, and you put that on the, put a shell back of a, of a nymph and he would, and he would coat it. Okay, so, I kind of went on went on a search one day. I was in a in a needlepoint shop and I saw this stuff hanging on a wall. And the woman, she didn't have every color, but but she said she could get me in touch with people who she knew. So this is so she made me buy the line cards, which is if you're a wholesale dealer, you get this card with a bunch of this stuff on it. Okay. How about that? That's one line card. There's another one. Now I'm going to research. I'm trying. I found an outfit in LA. There's there's a whole list. Now I found a uh, an outfit in LA, and they carry it, but I haven't been able to get to talk to anybody because of COVID. COVID. So um, they also had one that they called a fuzzy. Okay, so if it's anything like this, it might be a real interesting material for for fly tying and especially like midges and stuff like this. Okay, so back to the chronomids. So when when you build these, they they have. Uh, uh, let me get a a photograph here. So here's an here's an article that I found. Uh, of, it's called fly craft angling. Okay, kind of an interesting. They put on some great tutorials. 
and here is here are some pictures of them. now one of the things that uh pieces that i find is an important piece of this this insect is let's see i don't know which camera we better let's try the other one i didn't do this yeah that'll work okay so you can see this this uh breathers up here and this is kind of the head and this is the wing buds in some of the patterns they use uh goose biots uh and they actually form it down this way now the pattern that we're going to do this is it right here i've got it on the vise and so this little glow right here this little band that you see right there is to imitate that and I, i'll show you how we bow that out just a little bit and then you then the coloring comes back and here you can see they're really kind of chromey looking now they don't get to that point till they're almost ready to uh, to put as they're really close and hanging in, in the surface film. Um, they start out in the bottom. And this would be like the blood worm. This would be like the blood worm. You see they're a little red, a little dark. Um, I've actually made them with uh, white, uh, like a white floss thread and actually colored them from red to uh, to a lighter color, or to a lighter red, kind of a uh, an orangey red. Um, and the article where this was this blue blue boy they call it, or big blue or something. Uh, let me get a picture of it because the picture in here is fantastic. Okay, so that's 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 the one we're going to tie. Now, the only difference we're going to do is I'm not going to use the goose biot for this. I have a flash material. Um, it's just, you know, one of the shiny materials that we get that you can find in the shops. And I find it work. It was a lot easier to deal with and it worked and it works really, really well. Um, and what this basically is, it's black, a black body. It has a red wire rib and this is a blue holographic and I've actually turned it around and put a red holographic and a blue wire and i find it it, it really didn't fish any different but this thing uh, i fished it uh well a year and a half ago at the end of the season in uh uh in 19 and then fished it a, a little bit a lot well, actually not a little bit but quite a bit last year uh plus some other colors okay now the, now if you're gonna and 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 you and there is a way when you fish these um, because we're going to talk about colors, because the uh, the coloring is 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 part of uh, part of how you fish them. In their beginning, they are they are the blood worms, and they they basically hang in the mud. So if this is the mud, they basically hang in the mud, and they kind of hanging around like this. And they they will move, and they will and they move kind of in a in a fashion like that. And 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 they are basically hang around when they're when they're more in their red state their blood worm they call them uh for quite a while and they don't get much more than maybe two or three feet off the bottom so if you're going to be fishing red ones you want to have those red ones actually lower at the bottom of the water column um, probably no more than about two feet off the bottom you know and there's a way you can do that by putting a weight on your line you learn your depth and and stuff like that I kind of use my depth finder in the boat and I kind of would judge that by that. Um, especially if you're going to, if you're going to do it now, those seem to work maybe a little better under an indicator because there's less movement. So if you want to use an indicator, um, you can use the, uh, uh, what is it? The, there, there's a, 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 a poly one. I think that, uh, West water has, has, has touted. Um, I use the lightest, and the smallest one that I can that'll hold that'll hold the fly. In fact, I don't even mind whether that indicator is even down in the water some, because it'll it'll give a nice little movement. Um, wind is actually our friend when you're fishing chronomids. Um, so the red ones are kind of in the bottom. Uh, when they start to get up, that's when they kind of change color. Um, you will see some with uh, little red butts, butts on them. Uh, and 
and uh, the people tie a little red, so the red is the is the hemoglobin. Um, and then as, as, as they get closer to service to mature, that's when they turn into their kind of the, the shiny or the chromy that there is. They call it a chromy. Um, uh, popular material for, for the chromy, um, which is a material that is a little, let's see, let me get it out of the bag a little bit. This is kind of a this is a gunmetal gray that I found um, that um, this is a gunmetal gray, and what they used to use is the static bags from uh, electronic work. Uh, Sherry will can attest to that. That was around, and they had ways with they cut it. Uh, in fact, one of the guys in the club gave me a set of razor blades that where I could cut like six or seven thing. They had razor blades with washers in between stacked up, and it was a giant cutter for that. I can't find it. It's one of the things that's missing in my in this room. But and so they get this chromy color looking. And, and as as you if you look at them in the magazines and online, you'll you can see what a chromy is. Okay. And so what I what I found in 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 these and in fishing them is the way you fish them static, what we call static without an indicator, is to throw up as as close up into the wind as you can. Um, usually you can throw this, you, you know, you get the five mile an hour man wind, something like that. You can throw three quarters of the way up. And basically you mend just like you would in a river you mend to try to get a real dead drift so that the, the wave action isn't dragging it. Kind of, kind of you, can, you can tell, you can feel it. And what you can do is you're in touch with that fly the whole time. And you don't have to have a perfect straight line to it either. That's another, you get a straight line, you're really dragging a little bit. So let that wind kind of carry you. And what I use is I use a, a poly leader. Um, this is on a dry line. I use a poly leader. I, I make my own mono leaders um, and they end up 10 to 12 feet. That's that's the, the, and then I put a tippet ring on it. I use a lot, I use tippet rings a lot now. That little bitty one they have now, it will not sink a dry fly. It is, it's, it's a way to really save your leaders and just use your tippets. And so then you, then I run a fluorocarbon tippet anywhere from six to eight feet. So that means I'm, 16 or 18 feet out there. And what happens is you get enough bend in that, in the fluorocarbon to start taking the indicator, start taking the, the fly down. I fish two colors to begin with. I fish a, a kind of a red, uh, a, 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 a reddish brown, because uh, I'm, I'm fishing up in the water column, especially if you see the hatch of the midges on. Um, and I just let that drift and whatever one I start to get more fish on, if I don't get any hits, what I do is I turn the colors around and I put the black one on the bottom and put the reddish one on top or the reddish brownish one on top. I don't fish the blood worm too much. Um, I find when the hatch is on, you can get them on, on what, a black with a silver rib or a black with a red rib. Um, the red ones, you can put a silver rib or you can, you can put, I put a blue rib on a red one. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you some of those. They're, it's just like, it's one of these things that you can play with. And what I suggest is, is make sure when you make one up, you have three of them, okay? <laughs> because you may find the little, I mean, this is, this is the, this is a stuff that I was playing with just in yesterday, late in the afternoon. And you can see the little wing buds now, this one right here, there you'll see a little tough off the tail, off like a tail. That is that is like a paddle. It is it is part of their their swimming mechanism. Um, the thorax, you can either you can have the bulb like this. You can have that bulb. Uh, one of my favorites, and we're gonna we're gonna tie it, is this one right here. Um, that's got a different color rib. We're not gonna do that rib, but uh, let me get the other one here. Uh, this one right here, this silver, this is a silver, with a black with silver rib and peacock and the white, white bead. I, the bead doesn't have, that's, uh, 
a two point a two point three. It's called pearl white. Um, I like the pearl white one, um, and this is, I believe, this is probably a brass bead. Um, I, I like tungsten beads, uh, but the it, the brass is okay. But this this one here, uh, this is this color right here, uh, did really really well. That crane did really really well. Uh, Sarah got a, about a 22 inch uh, brook trout on this on that thing, and it was absolutely one of the prettiest brook trout I've, I've seen in a long time. It was gorgeous. Um, so the, the, the color variations can be uh, just about anything. Here is a red with silver wire. Um, I find up here, and, and I haven't, I, I, it's, I'm, I'm going to do more testing of that uh, this year of the peacock and the bead versus, versus the bulb. Like I call it the bulb head, which is this one right here. Um, I, it, I, I think this one works better as the as the lower, and then have one with the wing with the with the breathers as the top. And this is what you would consider a chromey right here, the chrome color. And here is another one here with with a little red butt on it. Uh, you can see that color, okay? And they are I use basically the 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 straight shank hook is a is a mustad a 3906b um, it's a 3x and it's a uh, it's a 2x long um, the grub hook look and that's just the the standard mustad hook uh, for the heavyweight grub hook um, i like this fill the the filling mean mill uh, flies um, they're a nice wide gap oh that's what this is um and they hook they hook up nice they're sharp um i like a little heavier hook than this um i like these heavier hooks they 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 drop nicely and when you're when you're on that on the drift it's amazing how many you get on the way back now if you want to pull if you want to pull them back in it's very it can be the, the little figure eight drift back to yourself um, very little pulls, maybe some just a little long jerky pull of maybe three inches, just, you know, just one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, and then stop. And then let it sit again. Um, and a, another thing that I, that I found out in, 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 in fishing uh, this, the still water, which, which I never did, did a whole lot of before I came up here. I fished a little bit. I fished a lot of still water when I was fishing lures um and when i was bubble fishing flies before i bought a fly rod i was bubble fishing with my grandfather uh when, when i was 14 15 years old um and then we were modifying panther martins at that time um, in ways that were kind of strange but they became an incredible and so i i really stopped bait fishing which drove my grandfather crazy a little bit because he was a really really good bait fish he died on the sacramento river fishing so um I kind of have that heritage in me. He, he was he was really really a good good fisherman, but what I find is the wind is really your friend. It because if you think about the wind on a on a lake, it is depending on the miles per hour. I I've never heard the depth compared to that, but the water there's a water level that moves with the amount of wind that's blowing. So if the wind is blowing at five, about so much of the surface water, you know, eight nine ten inches is moving also so you have current on a lake that you can use to your friend one of the one of the biggest mistakes you can do is cast straight down wind and pull a fly backwards especially if you're fishing nymphs in the top two or three feet of water because you're actually doing something that the fly doesn't do the real bug doesn't do it doesn't swim against the current okay another thing if you're in a pontoon boat the worst thing you can do is drag the fly behind you. The best thing you can do is throw out to the side. I don't care what weight of line you're doing, is throw out to the side of you because you're fending, you're swimming over the top of the water that you're fishing. I find that it fishes better if you can go out the side. I do that with my pram. I fish in my eight foot pram. Uh, the pontoon boat's just, my back just doesn't deal with it very well anymore. 
So the eight foot pram, when I'm drifting with it, I'm thrown out to the side. I'm not dragging, even if I'm trolling a fly, I don't troll back behind me. I throw out and let give the line a chance to sink properly before I start dragging it up. Okay. Just some that's just some fishing tips. Okay. Any any questions on any of that? It's all good, Jer. Uh, no, it's stunning oh, people. All right. Okay. I'm so for that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh let's see if we can uh, tie one here. And uh, that's we're gonna, we're gonna tie that that blue one. Yeah. Someone had a question? Okay. And I when I and, if, and when I have them in my uh, in my case, I use these kind of cases. There's only one or two little beads in here. I, I try to separate the beaded ones from the from the non-beaded so I can make choices. And you can tie these all the way from 16 up to 10. They have bigger midges in, in the UK from what I'm understanding. They, they fish 10 and they fish 12s all the way to eight in the early season. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna tie this on the on the grub hook. I've already I've already put the bead on. Um, I how do I put beads on? I basically take my tweezers. Well, I'll, sh I'll show you here. I'll hang this upside down. I basically hold my hook like this. I take the bead in the tweezers and I drop it right on the hook. And then the first thing I do after the bead lands there is I pinch it here. Now I can do anything I want with it. Now you can see. I have the the open the cut the say that the 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 open end of the bead that we normally put towards the hook bend. I have that forward, and I'm going to show you why we do that. Okay. So we have a bead in there. So now I'm I, and you can use the tying thread. I'm just used to doing this. This is a it's I think it's called the nano. This is a nano thread. It's a very fine fine thread. It's it's tough to cut. It's kind of strange to cut. So you got to have to make sure your scissors are sharp. And I put a a, a little layer here. And we're going to put what we're going to do is going to put that wing bud in. And I usually and I use poly. I don't use antron. So I come back and make sure I'm I'm back about. Then I'm going to come all the way forward. I'm going to take new pair of scissors. I've been playing with. No. Nope. My hands got so there we go. Okay. So now the poly is just rather well, it is this is basically Zelon. And it was a wide, wide strand like this. And so I've kind of separated and, and pulled off about half. I split it in half. So I have this this section. Okay. So I kind of smooth it out like this and get some little bit of fibers that I know will get in my way. And then I'm going to cut it off straight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do our little trick where we come under the thread. So it's like our first wrap. And remember, I'm all the way to the eye. I'm going to take a wrap over and another wrap over, not too tight. Now I have it sitting there. And I'm going to spin it now like we would do spinner wings. And I'm going to pull it and massage it just a little bit. Come up, get my thread around the one, pick up the thread on the other side. Now you see I have one real long and one real short, okay? And that's to try to save some of the material. You have to have a little bit of material on the short side. It's gonna be longer than your, uh, than the bud is good, than the wing, than the, than the breather is going to be, but you need to have a hold of it when you cut it so that you get a nice even cut when you come off. And then what I do is I kind of push everything forward, pull everything forward. And it's, it's still kind of, I still have the V in it. And then I'm gonna take a wrap over the top, real, real close. And I'm basically jamming that stuff forward a little bit, just like you would if you were trying to, uh, make a wing upright or, or upright a post, okay? And I'm gonna push it forward. 
And if I see something out of whack, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to get rid of them right now. Don't. If you got some wild hairs hanging back here, you can keep trying to play with them. Don't. Just cut the damn thing off. Okay. Now, now I'm going to trim the long side the same size, about the same size as the short one. So I have kind of a V shape there. Okay. Keep pushing it, massaging that forward. I'm going to take a couple of wraps back, get back on, on the shank. In other words, you've got your bunch of thread packed right here. We don't want to get too much thread there or we won't be able to get the bead up there. And I got another hair hanging down. So again, I'm going to come in, try to get it out of the way. Yeah, it may lay down here in a minute anyway. So then I, I, I take my thread from that big stack and I get back on the shank. One, two, three. Now I'm going to take my whip finisher and I am going to make one, two, three. I'm going to pull that a little bit. And when I pull it, I'm going to pull it that direction just a little bit so the, so the wraps really touch and that whip locks in there. Uh, if you're uncomfortable and you find that thread comes out after you cut this like this, then uh, maybe make a whip finish a three and then maybe a single. Okay, so now I'm going to cut that thread out of there. I'm going to take my super glue. You're going to see this drop probably easier than I am. I, I use this here. And I'm going to put a drop right there. Not up here, but right there. And you can, you can see just a little bit of that drop. Okay, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Okay, now when I take the bead, I'm gonna take the bead and I'm gonna rotate the bead as I go up. And now I'm gonna grab those fibers and I'm gonna pull them up and pull them forward. And I'm gonna push the bead until I can feel the glue start to lock and then I'm gonna let go. And then I'm gonna come up here quickly and I'm gonna spread that back out again. So it's not perfect, but it doesn't matter. It, it's okay. That's 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 good enough. Now that gets the bead locked in, and so what that does, the little cupping does, it actually uh, cups around those breathers and kind of holds it there in that position, uh, and it's uh, it's just something that helps that. Okay. Plus, when you go to now, when we go to wrap everything else up here, it's a nice smooth here. I don't. Uh, I don't have that cup to try to fill up that cup. That's a weird part of the bead that I find. Um, and I don't do a whole lot of a whole lot of beads much anymore. I don't um, I just don't I'll, 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 I'll wait to fly in another way if I want wait. Um, uh, so anyway, so now we'll take the black thread. And this is just Vivas. This is the uh, 16 aught. Um, the one thing I really liked about the Vivas is I like the way it goes flat. You can really get this stuff flat. I'm going to start all the way back. Touching wraps. I'm going to hold this thread up here to keep my touching wraps going. Get rid of that thread. The one thing I find also about the Vivas is when you snap it, if you're used to you know taking that little tag and snapping it off, is that it'll fray, sometimes the, the action of that will fray this wrap right here, this last wrap. So you have that tag hanging out here and you go to snap it off. It'll fray this a little bit um, and it messes things up. So now this is a small ultra wire. Once in a while, if you look in the shops and I have a spool around here, but I don't know where it went, is I, it has extra small. I like the extra small wire. In fact, I think, if I remember correctly, yeah, here's an extra small. So let me get the extra small. This is off my little multi-tying wire device here. Let me uh, see if I can get this off. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be extra small, and I and I suggest you you 
if you start playing with the with the with those softer with the smaller wires you begin to like it because you'll see that it's it doesn't take over the bug okay so put that on the far side and then i'll roll it down i have that started a couple of wraps and i'll let that hang back here now the next thing we're going to put on is uh, a blue holographic um I've I've used a couple of different blues. Um, this is uh, basically just blue. There's an iron blue that's kind of pretty. That is fun to think. That's why I'm interested in that line card because I think it might make uh, some really interesting effects uh, with that. Okay, so I'll pull a little bit of this off. Get it flat. I'm going to flatten my thread out a little bit here. That's what we're, at, what we're after. And just nice, nice wraps right to the back. And I like to come down, start down, down the bend, and then you can come back. Now I'm going to flatten the thread out. I find a, a good time to change and flatten the thread is any time you change direction. So I've come down here. So now I'm going to go back. And I try to put a wrap next to a wrap. And if you, one thing about the Vivas too is once you get the, the thread flat, you can actually see the thing twisting, and you can see the the twist marks start to come to where okay, I got to flatten out the thread some more. Come all the way up. Now we're going to taper this body a little bit, so I'm going to flatten the thread out because I'm changing direction. Now I'm going to go back the other way. So I, what I do is I, I say, if you're going to taper, you work in quarters. So there's about a quarter of the body. So now I'm going to flatten the thread out. And I'm going to start back. And I got a low spot that I'm coming to. And that's part of, because I didn't take the ribbing all the way forward. It's kind of, uh, I kind of did that on purpose. If you take the ribbing all the way forward, you won't have this little gap, this little low spot. You can see, um, you can see it right here in the bottom, right here. Okay, that's uneven, and that's because that's that's where the end. I stopped the wire, so that was kind of to show you that um, don't do that. Take the ribbings all the all the way to the bead. Okay, come up here, or at least up to here to this point right right here because you, you're going to fill this in a little bit more. OK, so come up. We're going to beat again. Now, chronomids need to be thin. Um, there is some designs out there in patterns that they actually use uh, pheasant, uh, pheasant tail. So now we're, we're to the halfway point. Again, I reached a, a, a change in direction. So now I'm going to flatten the thread out again. Can't wait to be able to see. This is going to be good. I can go camping now. I know I can tie in the dark. Okay. So now we're going to going to rib this. Any questions up to this point? Okay. So now the blue I'm going to I'm going to start and you're going to have to leave a wider gap than you normally do so it's kind of it's kind of a feel thing you have to get get a feel for
funny, I'm using the camera to be able to see this. This is kind of weird. It's okay. As Sherry says, not my first rodeo tying in the dark here. Okay, so now we got the ribbon. I'm gonna hold on to that pretty tight and get a wrap going there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive it back against the bead and then I'm gonna pull it forward and I'm gonna wrap it to there. Reach in. Get that off. Now you see me reaching over here. Um, I'll show you what I've got going so that it's it's one of my my prize pieces, and I even take it to the shows with me. Okay. Okay, this is a piece of plastic and a plastic bottom. Here is some magnetic strips. And here's little clips. Now, when I'm tying, I basically you can see the colors sitting up there. That's where I hang my wire. There's nothing worse than putting that stuff, your little piece, down on the bench and it flopping all around. You're not finding it. This this works really, really well. Okay. Let's put that down, hopefully without knocking it over and sending it everywhere. Okay. So now we're going to take the red, and now what we're going to do is we're going to go fill in that gap. Now, one of the things, because I have red, I'm sitting here, and remember I said that sometimes it's nice to have a little red butt. Well, you know, I've got a little bit of wire right here. So why don't I make a nice little tag, as we would call it, a little red tag, and push it up a little bit. I'm gonna take three wraps this time. I'm gonna come back over, and now I'm going to try and fit in between the blue. Now, how many of you know Jackson Long, the guy that charges, uh, does the uh, the real fly, the realistic stuff? Jim, I know you know him well. He uh, he tied a chronomid one time, and I think it took him an hour and a half. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, but it, but I'm telling you, that was a pretty bad looking bug. I'll tell you. Yeah, he even had it down to the right uh, segmentations. Yeah, it was pretty funny. It was way cool. And he was, now, how can I say this without offending anybody? Please don't helicopter your wire, please. If you're gonna, if you're gonna break it off that way, just back and forth and take your time, because it, it will break. You helicopter it, and what I find, if you go to run your fingers on it like this, you'll feel all this roughness in the knots. And if you go to tie that in on a fly, you'll have all these little bumps in it if you're trying to make a smooth, smooth fly. So don't helicopter the wire. You can wiggle it back and forth. I'll let you do that or cut it, but don't helicopter it, okay? Okay, so now we're to that point. Now we're gonna flatten the thread way out. And now we're gonna start making our bulb. And we're gonna work something like to that point maybe a fifth and work back. Flatten. Now, this is this is the this is the blue boy you'll notice and we're going to we're going to make the other one. But this is how it's made. And I'm, I'm making one with the bead because I wanted to show you the breather, the breather right now and get that, get that out of the way. Because that's what most people are used to. Most people are used to building them this way. This is how the, the, the ice cream cone or whatever, however they describe it. Okay, so now I'm getting ready to finish this. 
So I'm going to go one, two, three. And I'm going to finish with my whip finish up at the top where the bead is. Has anybody seen this yet? No? Okay. This is this is this is this is almost sinful how, how cool this is. All right. So this is a UV resin with a little kit. There's your light built right into it. They get it off. This is the tube that in that side of that is the resin. And when you buy a couple of them of cartridges, you get another 10 with it. Um, this edge, sometimes I have another one and this broke on me. This, this comes out. Okay. And it has a basically a, like a clock battery in it. There's a battery in here. There's four little screws so you can change the battery. Okay. Now, oh, excuse me, I hope I didn't hear you didn't hear that on camera. All right, so here is a hat pin. Um, I like hat pins to do my smoothing out of my resin. And this is the first resin that I ever found where there is no, no residue whatsoever. So how I start is I start with it upside down. And I take and I you just squeeze a little bit and it comes right out of the end of that 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 too and you don't have to hurry remember this is this nothing happens to this till the uv hits it okay nothing so you have plenty of time. Uh oh, sorry. Can you, can you grab the tool? I'm sorry. Excuse me, just a second. Tool took off on me. Okay. So you have plenty of time to work this. And what I do is I make sure that I come back, and you and this is anything you do with resin, by the way, is make sure that you come back behind whatever you have wrapped in the back there because if you don't if you don't seal this back here where the tag is also water can get in there and water will work on this bug from the inside out and that's not cool okay on these clean that off so now i turn on my little magic light And that's it. Yep. It is. It's amazing. And this is. Um, I'll be right back, Jer. Okay. All right. So Just keep you going. get this whole thing. I think it's like I, Amazon. I want to see it's 18 bucks or something like that. And then the cartridges are are, are $6 or, or something like that. Um, and this. I've only gone through two cartridges since I've had it. This is I'm, I'm working on the second cartridge. So and it lasts a long time. Um, it you can build up real well with it. Um, and you can see that I have a wild, a little wild hair that, that that stand out. Again, once you start getting the camera on this, you really see things. But you can see that, that that's pretty good. So now the reason I left this long, remember I said I left this long for a reason up here is now I'm going to pull it and I'm going to cut it. If you don't, you sit near it because this stuff will move around with your scissors and even with serrated scissors, it'll, it'll move a little bit. And then if you have some wild ones like that one down in here, 
just get rid of it. But that's that's the white that's the cone head version of you call it the blue, it's called the blue boy I believe they call it yeah the blue eyed the blue eyed boy okay all right any questions on that all right okay so now we'll tie tie one the right way and uh, or tie one the way the way it was presented in the, in the magazine. All right, let me get a beat out. And that way I can show you how I bead this. So I basically take it like this and I slide it on. I grab it with that and that. And if I'm doing if I'm doing some beat a lot of bead work, I'll just put the beads on in the beginning. It is so much faster. Just go ahead and and do it. Um, well, that's right. This one's going to be without a bead, so that's okay. You got to see the bead going. All right. Now we're going to do the same bug, but we're going to do it without a bead. Get our thread going. Now that's about where the bowl will start when we finish. So that'd be the back of it. Then we're going to fill in all of there. So now this is where I want to put my uh, my wire. Where's my piece of wire go? Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I'm going to do my little dim the wire trick. Get it started. And blue flash. It's amazing how much you you utilize your fingernails when you cut them. And uh, anyway, so now here we go. Lock that in. Flatten out a little bit. And if you're on the water and you ask somebody what color they're using, usually what they give you is the thread color, then the wire is the second. So if they say it's black and red, it's black thread with red wire, rather black with red wire, black and silver, black body, silver wire. If they say red with black or red with blue or red with red is another, um, another color that they, they do. So I flatten the thread out again, by the way, and now we're gonna come back a couple of rounds. Now we're gonna go forward. Green is another color up here, St. Green. I've never fished much green, but um, I am hearing that uh, green has been working sort of. So they do take on the, the vegetation uh, color. So we're gonna go all the way up because we're gonna be all, we're gonna have to fill this all the way in now. So we're gonna start now by starting, I'm gonna start with going back, flatten thread. Couple of wraps from the finish. Before you turn around, I'm going to flatten thread now. Two, three, four. Got a quarter of the way. Now we're going to come back. You can see that you can 
And I've tried heavier threads. And what I find is if you get in a bind and you're trying to fill gaps, it's harder to control. A little light right there. And so I, I find the, the finer threads um, and the ones you can really flatten are, are, are the best to use. You can, you can fill in better. Um, your tapers, I think, are, are nicer. Um, if you're really making, uh, say, like a chromie, if you're really making something in a tinsel body, and some people use a silver tinsel, some people use the mylar um, for the body. Um, I've seen real thin uh, mylar rib. Um, let's see, that's a, that's a thick one. But they, they make the real thin, thin mylar ribs. Um, the, the sulkies, stuff like this, people use this for the ribs. Um, they, you can do just about anything, any color combination you want. Um, sometimes I think it's just more of how you're fishing it and how efficiently you're, you're fishing it. Okay, so now we're gonna take the blue. I'm gonna park that way up at the eye. And again, we're making bigger gaps than we normally would because we're going to fit a red wire in there. And you can see why we, if you're if you're tying this any smaller, and this is um, this is a twelve, by the way. And I fish I fish twelve and fourteens pretty continuously. I even later in the year uh, when the bugs start to supposedly get smaller. Um, I find that the, the 14 is about as small as I have to go to be able to be catching fish. Right, let's take that forward and bring it back. Before. Somewhere right in there. Hang that in my hanger. Okay. Little wrap to wrap that down. Okay. Now I'm going to bring the red forward. Again, I'm going to take couple little extra wraps to give myself that red tag. Up in between the blue. Yeah. Now I gotta take the wire around it one time. And be sure to hold on to your wires when you um, when you're wrapping, when you go to when you go to tie it off. That way you keep the tension. Um, one of the tricks um, in uh, say if I was gonna counter wrap wire to your to, so if you counter wrap your wire like i'm counter wrapping this way let's say that was going to be a counter wrapped rib and you go to wrap your thread to tie it off you find you always find you lose you can you can pull that and then that first wrap kind of lifts like this so you have the tag end of this hanging out of the wire you go to pull that up and you can see this wrap here kind of lift because your your the torque of your thread is going the opposite of you've had that rib what I find is if you go around with two wraps and pull straight down, you won't undo that. You, the, the torque won't tighten it up. You'll just tighten those wraps around the wire. Okay, so when you counter rib, when you go to tie it off, take two wraps and uh, pull straight down. That's a really good tip. Yeah. Okay, so now we got those that all in. 
wires in there, the blue is in there. So now we're going to start filling in. And I use the flat, the flat thread because the flat thread covers better than, than a twisted thread. It actually will cover things up quicker. Okay, I get it to about this point here because I'm getting close to what I want. And now we're going to put in our little wing buds. So I'm going to put come all the way back to the back of the of the bulb or the head. <clears throat> and you can also put breathers only on this if you wanted to. You could you could put breathers on this without the bead. That's that's all it's all legal stuff. Excuse me. Okay, let me get my uh, little flash material. So here is my material I'm going to use. And by the way, a little trick that I found on the internet was kind of interesting. So we have our stuff in the baggie like this, right? So every time we use it, we're pulling it out of the bag. Well, this person said, just cut the other end open, slide it up. And when you see something in here you want, you just pull it up and out and cut it out and you don't have that thing all over the place, okay? I thought that was kind of cool. And it works. I've been doing it for a while. So now I have this bag, that big long piece of material. So I'm going to come under the thread and I'm going to come all the way down and onto the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to take We wrap that and we lift them both up. One side is short. And why do we do that? Because I don't want to waste too much material. I'm going to keep those on the bottom. Okay, so now that material is there. You do want them on the bottom. Because the angle is from the bottom as you come up, the angle of this bud is this direction. Now, if you go to Davy McPhail, and I know most of you know who that is, uh, Davy has a thing where he has this one where he, these little wing buds, when he's on the bulb, let's say this is the bulb and this is the side. He actually takes the material and it it actually is bowled out like this, and he fills it all fills that that hole all with epoxy. It really is a really interesting uh, chronometer. Um, he uses a I think of like a flex floss to do that. And in the UK, the material that they used to, they use for this thing right here, it's off of a potato chip bag, and it's. It, I don't know. I've never gotten the name of it. And all I know is that oh, we got it. It's 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 off the chip. They would call it. Okay, so we're going to build that bulb up. We're getting close. And the other thing that happens when you uh, have flat thread is you can do this bulb, and your thread won't slide off. Um, a lot of times when you're building bulbs up or you're building the uh, balls of stuff up with the thread when you pull on the thread the here's your windings they do this weird crimp and stuff but if you have the flat thread everything lays down better it just lays down better okay so now we're getting to the point where i'm going to tie them off basically what i do is i push them up on top and i make them cross up on top then i take a wrap of thread well i'm going to let me spin the thread so the so the loop goes back to my fingers. And two soft wraps. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there we are crossed. Okay. Make some little adjustments here. And there we go. Now take. <clears throat> Now 
my finer needle. By the way, I this this needle here I've built really really fine point on it, and it's for splitting thread. And then just so I don't use it for anything else, I put a black dot on it, so I know that it's it's my real fine needle point, so that I don't tear it up on something. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach in between the bulb and the material, and I'm going to pull it out just a hair if I can. I can't, I can't get it. I can't see it. It's too fine to be. Anyway, so now they're laying. You see how it's laying at the angle? And the other one's laying about the same angle. So I'm in good shape. So now I'll put a couple of hard wraps, two, and I'll let that hold that. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut this. I'm going to take and try to lay those down. Like a little flash off the end. I'm not that worried about it. Now, those of you seen me tie before know that I like the lacquer of the thread when I do my whip finish. And I found something in the last month or two that has made a huge difference in how this works. So it's one, two. All good, we're back. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna take my uh, little lacquering stick and I'm just gonna touch this very softly there. And what I found is if I twist the thread flat, the the lacquer gets more, it has an easier chance of penetrating the thread and it actually works better. Okay, so if you flatten the thread, the, the thread's flat, so the lacquer gets to go into it and it makes actually a better, uh, a better finish. Because I usually wrap, I usually, uh, whip finish with a flat thread anyway. So now we have that. Now we're gonna turn it upside down. Get our little magic box again. Get my half point out. Put the lid in the lid, just it just slides on. Uh, there's a couple little notches um, that that it just goes into, and it it the tip it, the tip doesn't clog or anything. It's it's really kind of interesting. Now you'll see that it's flowing. You can see the big drip I have. So now we can come up, tip it upside down. Remember, I'm going to go past the tag because I want to seal that butt. Because the stuff is always moving, remember that, until you get something on it. And then we get this on it. And there's just a little switch right here, just a little switch right on the, that little orange dot right there is the switch. Okay. What's the name of the product, Jerry? It's it's Bondic. B O N D I C. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and Where it it's on, it's it? on Amazon, and uh, it's I mean it's 
and it doesn't leave anything. I mean, every other one I've ever had has some kind of a slick feel to it afterwards. This doesn't. Okay, so that's it. That is that's, beautiful. That's the blue eyed boy. Okay. Well, I think you did a terrific job for us today. Yeah, let me uh, let me show you the one that I the the one it, again. It's that is that is that is is one of my favorites right there, and it's basically the black with silver rib with the little paddle white on it. You just put that in as you're building the body up. And then instead of building the bulb, you just put in some peacock curl. Now, now that, that's on your handout. Pardon? It's on your handout. Yeah, I think that, yeah, that one is on the handout. Yeah. Now, one of the things I will tell you now is, remember, like I said, I, I bring the lacquer back here to seal that. Do not put the peacock on without sealing this first. Ah. Stop your thread at the bead. In other words, you built the whole thing. You got your wire built in right now. You stop now. You put your now you put your uh, UV resin on and you resin it with the thread still hanging here. It doesn't do any doesn't do anything different to it at all. And then seal it. UV light it, and then put your peacock curl in. And if you if you do your peacock properly and you tight when you when you get the peacock tied in. And you're right into you're sitting here with your thread right here. Let's say, let me get my hand steady right here. Take your thread and tighten it up. And take one wrap right through, right through the peacock curl. And I mean, you there's there's one wrap right through here, and you would never know it. You take that, what is this? This is uh 16 aught. You tighten that up. You can you just jiggle, jiggle like crazy going through it, just like you would um. You put uh, one in a putting a rib in a palmered uh, a palmered uh, feather body, um, and you just one wrap right through it and come right back out right to the edge of the bead, then flatten the take one complete wrap again, then flatten the thread out, put your lacquer on your whip finish and pull that in there, and your that that thing won't do it because if you don't, what happens I found is that water seeps in through that because you just have thread there. And you seal this, plus when you seal this, it can mess up the, the peacock a little bit. It's really hard to keep it from migrating, you know, or, or uh, what do they call it? The capulation or uh, something like that. But uh, but yeah, that's that's one of my favorite ones right there. And you can actually put the smaller two millimeter bead, two millimeter bead there also, okay? Oh, Jerry, this any? was terrific. Uh, if you guys could unmute yourself and uh, if yeah. you have any questions for Jerry. Uh, there's Kathy unmuted and Kathleen yeah. joined us a little bit later. Thanks Kathleen for coming. Yeah. Thanks. My thing got over. So I got to at least see the end. <laughs> well, it, I'm going to post this, uh, uh, and put it up on the YouTube channel. So cool. Thanks Jerry. Yeah. Yeah. And so, just, I'll go real, I'll, I'll show you what, I'll show you what the chromy looked like in the, in the vice. Um, so you'll see what it what it does. So, and that is, I think that's a that is a blue thread in there. I think in that one, um, and it has a little red butt. Now, sometimes what you can build this red butt out of is either thread or the silky, like the mylar. It's it's basically you know, like a holographic, real fine, um, and. Uh, they some people be, be make them out of D rib, um, the you know the clear vinyl stuff. I know uh, Fishner, um, uh, a guy a guy that used to come come down south from uh, come comes lives up in the Cantaloupes area. Bob Griffin knew him really really well. A good friend of Bob Griffin, and and so that that would be the that would be the chromy. Okay. Wow. So uh, a lot of versatility uh, and your yes, creativity, right? <laughs> yeah, it's and like I said, when you when you're playing, you want to work with a different color or a different combination, then make sure you make three, <laughs> so that you, <laughs> because you may you may lose one. And the other thing that I that I love, like fishing without indicator, 
is I'm not kidding. You can feel the fish. You can feel them when he is playing with it. And sometimes they can they can nudge at it, and it'll be almost like uh, like if you're fishing like with an old salmon egg. You can feel them touching. You can feel them touching, but you're afraid to strike. And really, strip striking. You don't have to lift the rod up. Just strip strike. It works just as well. Well, I'm gonna try this. Uh, I've been uh, waiting to, for you to do this demo so I could go ahead and tie a few of these and I've already got all the material and uh, that other holographic stuff on the spool that you were showing us. I've had some of that for years and didn't know what to do with it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, and, I know. <laughs> and Wasatch used to make the bobbin for it. I don't know whether uh, Fairflies has, has picked that up, but that was a, a great, great deal when he did that. Yeah, because you can really control it, and that, that's I have, I have lots of colors in it. Um, it it's just a fun stuff to play with. Okay. Well, I know this is a lot of work, and it took us a while for all of us to get set up to do these classes, and so uh, there was hours and hours of work for everybody, and I'm really looking forward to doing this. Uh, if all else works well, and I still have the energy to put it all together. I'm focused on starting it again in November. Well, yeah. So anybody else have any questions or comments and yeah. be, be sure and send me uh, information on anything you'd like to see done for next year. Yeah. And I'll, I've started making a list already. Yeah. yeah. And, and don't be afraid to make multiple ribs. Here's one with a little blue holographic and a gold holographic. Okay, and next year, one of the mains we're going to do is I'm going to I I am going to show to how, tie how to how to make both multiple color wire bodies. Okay, where right. you're wrapping, you can wrap two or three colors of wire at one time. Oh, that'll be fun! I'll, that'll give the new technique for next year. <laughs> yep. Oh, Sherry, put that on the list. Okay, multiple wire. <laughs> and anything Multi -wire. else you think so? <laughs> Yeah, well, my problem right now is every time I find a pro find a problem, I'm trying to figure out what can I do to how can I make that work? How can I make that work? You know. Anyway, it's this has been fun. I it's been it's been fun for the for the whole 20 weeks just watching and and actually participating. And uh, as we uh, get our technology and uh, our imaging and our lighting better, um, I think. Uh, all the presentations will will be even better better next year. Oh, thanks. So, that thank it you. takes that was, some that, time. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, this was a good one. Thank you. And uh, look for it on uh, the YouTube channel, everybody. I'll send you a link. It was really, really great, Jerry. Okay. Thanks, good. Jerry. Yeah, thanks, you're welcome. Jerry. It was great. Yeah. yeah. And if Bye. I find if I find uh, some more on that on that materials, like I said, like the, the stuff I was showing you on the line card. Uh, some more about this yeah um, especially if they have a fuzzy body material it should be really really interesting so and we'll uh we'll we'll put some a notice out if i find something more about that jerry i have some information about those materials so i'll yeah. email you pardon i will email you yeah yeah it's it's called this called fireworks is the yeah fireworks the, is by rainbow gallery yeah, yeah, oh, that's really. People, oh, okay. Yeah, that's the that's the people I was trying to. Yeah, that's the people I've been trying to get a hold of. Well, I I know of two shops that carry it. Are up here? Yeah, one of them is in uh, Eugene, Mindy's okay. Needlepoint Factory. Okay. And um, I don't know what's going on now. You know, with yeah. things being closed down for COVID, but in the past she was placing orders like on a weekly basis. Okay. And yeah. I, I also have a friend here locally that carries some of the Rainbow Gallery yeah. fireworks and colors. Yeah. And where are you at, Kathy? I'm in Grants Pass. Oh, okay. Yeah, because the other, the where I got this the line card, uh, is uh, from these people here. It, it's a needlepoint shop in Pleasanton. I happened to be at Pleasanton at the fly fishing show. And there was a donut store. Of course, I can't pass up a donut store, so I went to get a donut in the morning. And the needlepoint shop just happened to be, she just happened to be open. So I went in there and I had some of Ray Radley's stuff. And I took a, I go, do you have any, cause there's a couple of other little pieces that look like this. 
And she said, you know, she, there's an outfit. She goes, it's called, she goes, I think it's called fireworks. So we looked it up and that I'm sure that's where Ray was getting it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can go to my girlfriend's shop and see if she has any of the color colors that you're interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, like I said, they didn't have many colors, but she said, I can get you a line card. So I, I think I paid $14 for the line card. And I'm not kidding you. I think on just the card alone, I bet you I can tie. Oh, yeah. Flies. Yeah. They yeah. have, they, I mean, yeah. you don't use that much for a fly. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. And I'm, my philosophy on that kind of stuff is this I, I don't want my, my fly to be a, a light bulb, but I want a little bit of glisten somewhere if I'm going to have some. Yeah. I'm, I'm not a big glitter person. I don't, I don't think we need to have the whole fly lit up like a light bulb in order to attract the fish. Mm -hmm. I would rather have, have the bug be a little bit more like the real bug in coloring and, and that than to, we can get into a big discussion, but it becomes a lure. Become, some flies to me now are nothing more than a panther martin. You might as well <laughs> be fishing a panther martin. You're not fishing anything that looks like a bug. It may shape and have a shape, but it isn't anything but a, but a lure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, anyway. Called, but Jerry, I think that those are called attractor patterns. Yes. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's exactly what they do to it. Yes. Well, yeah. we're going to be looking for fishing stories uh, for this summer yeah, as yeah. we and take I, our break to go fishing. Uh, take some pictures and uh, we're going to need pictures for uh to put on our on our uh, yeah. maybe yeah. our and please webpage be careful someday. this summer yeah. yeah and please be careful this summer this is going to be some of the lowest water we've ever had i think i i believe it's going to be uh at, at times it's going to get horrific i know that davis lake right now is lower than it was last year when it started and those those of you who have ever been there the big trees that sit in uh odell channel they're almost totally all showing completely. Oh, wow. So if anybody that, that's fished it, it's, um, we've heard of a few people walking <laughs> in Odell, uh, walking quite a ways and barely having water above their knee and uh, at an Odell. And so um, it's gonna be, that, that one's gonna be hurting, hurting real bad. The water, I can tell you, I've, the water coming out of Wiki up is just screaming right now. Sarah and I were on a walk there the other day along the river and it's just screaming out of there um so be careful this summer um and uh have fun and yeah post some pictures but boy release the fish in the water if you can just keep them in the water as much as you can yeah so it's been well, fun thanks everybody and we'll thank go you. see us again thank you bye. all right bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.